people without parliament, we began the year and we went to the polls. Would we elect Winston Churchill and a new government pledged to check state controls of our lives? Or would we vote for another five years under Clement Attlee? To the huge Piccadilly election night crowd, early returns foreshadowed a close finish. But despite a dramatic swing of votes, Mr. Attlee remained at number 10. We guessed he'd have a difficult time. We couldn't guess how difficult. Meantime, London lit up, lovely in the lighting, to welcome the French president. The social high spot was the visit of Monsieur and Madame Oriol to Covent Garden. Later in the year, the King and Queen were to entertain Queen Juliana. In one way and another, it was a very full year for the royal family. Queen Mary electrified the world when, to raise dollars for Britain, she gave a beautiful carpet she herself had made. In the entertainment world, the public voted Richard Todd Screen Actor of the Year for his acting in The Hasty Heart. Moira Shearer took time off from dancing to sign a life contract at Hampton Court. And at the zoo, Brumas made her first bow to the public. For the royal family, the great event of the year was the birth of Princess Anne. For the moment, Prince Charles climbed down to take second place to his new sister, Princess Anne Elizabeth Alice Louise. In the world of sport, Reg Harris, Sportsman of the Year, won the World Cycling Sprint Championship for the second consecutive year. He's the first Briton ever to win the title, so he proved himself doubly a real champion. At Wembley, Footballer of the Year Joe Mercer led Arsenal to a cup victory over Liverpool. The stunt sensation of the year seemed to be the mass channel swim of 24, but nine succeeded. Eileen Fenton of Dewsbury won the women's prize, but Lieutenant Abdul Rahim of the Egyptian army was first across. Tipped as the wonder horse, American-bred Prince Simon seemed to have the derby won till Johnston on Galcador pulled off a typical finish. Carr made a desperate effort and Prince Simon responded gamely. But the post was too near and Galcador won to recompense Johnston for a short head defeat the year before. As a matter of fact, this was a great year for Johnston, who won four of the five classics. One who will soon be after his laurels is Lester Pickett, the 14-year-old jockey who rode 52 winners during the season. There were disasters to sadness. 80 Welsh rugby fans lost their lives in this plane wreck. They had flown to see Wales beat Ireland. Death struck at journey's end as they returned. And when the Irish mail was wrecked at Penman Moor, there were 400 holiday makers on board. But 64 lives were lost on duty when Truculent was rammed in the Thames estuary and sank with a great gash in her bows. And they were on duty too at Knockshinnock when a field subsided into the coal workings. 129 were trapped. All but 13 were saved. Of these, no trace was found. We had our triumphs too. The huge Loch Sloy Dam was completed, trapping water in the highlands to give Scotland her greatest electrical power station on the banks of Loch Lomond. And Brab One, biggest civil plane in the world, paid its first visit to London, making an impressive landing at London Airport. The Wilkes brothers gave us the world's first Tober jet car, and to the surprise of the world, it worked. The DH Comet set new standards in civil flying. But whilst we built for peace, others stirred up strife. The Soviet-inspired Berlin Youth March spelled trouble. Cool nerves and a firm stand saved the day. But communism was clearly on the march. And in Belgium, fierce riots followed Leopold's return to the throne. Brussels became a battlefield. Peace was restored only when Leopold agreed to abdicate. <laughs> 